Hello and welcome to another Take 5 video. My name is John Recknagel, Precast Application Specialist, and in today's video we're going to be discussing cloning templates and some drawing settings here, so let's jump right in. Starting off today, instead of jumping right into the model here, we're going to actually jump right into the file explorer here. And what I want to shed some light on is there is this model called Basic Structural Traditional that is kind of buried away when you install the USA um, Imperial environments here. So take note of this extension here, kind of depending on wherever you um, install Tecla Structures to, but it's saved in the environments USA, Imperial, General, Cloning Templates, and the model here is Basic Structural Traditional. That's what we're going to be using today. So if I minimize this out, this is the model that you'll see. Um, basically, we call this our precast graveyard here. And you see we have kind of some of your most typical precast elements here, your inverted T-beams, double T, stairs, columns, wall panels, and the like kind of all thrown in here. And what this is, this is a cloning template, right? So this is purposefully kind of buried and kind of hidden um, under, under, you know, kind of behind the scenes. But I wanted to shed some light onto this, been getting a lot of questions about this lately. So, um, so this here is a cloning template. And what I would recommend, um, if you're going to do any playing around or kind of tinkering, maybe do a save as or something so that way you don't um, kind of disrupt or... You know, kind of, uh, you know, hurt any of those links that that may be protruding back to your regular projects here. But um, because how how this is kind of working here. So if I just open up our document manager, you can see that we have a drawing here of each of these precast elements, and you also see that they're part of the master drawing catalog here. So this is kind of what's pushing all that data, um, kind of throughout. So if I just take a look, let's just open up one of these drawings here. Just pick a column. Kind of the reason behind this too, as this is opening up, is you know getting a lot of questions about some of the AI within Tecla, how you know how to further automate things and, and really how to get started, right? So this is this is going to be more geared to those people that, that haven't really set up any of the AI um, and just just kind of looking for a place to get started. So what I would recommend is jumping into this basic structural traditional model. And then just taking a look at some of the drawing settings that we've already set up out of the box for you. And then you can kind of look to those as, you know, guide or direction that you can either tweak things or modify things or maybe even just use them flat out. So what I'll first do, um, as you can see, everything in this drawing, as you would expect, is done through Tecla's AI. There's no manual work put in here. Um, but this is kind of what we... Um, have set up available out of the box. Now this is great, but in order to you know utilize these settings, you have to kind of follow suit with how we've set things up. And what I mean by that is we've created filters that tell each of these strings to do certain things. But those filters and that criteria has to be met in order for you know the filter to recognize those elements and for those rules to work. So if we start off real quick just by taking a look at the embeds here, um, as you can see, when I highlight the embed dimensioning rule, you can see that the embed in pink over here, this EP19 highlights, that lets us know that this rule created that dimension string. Now, if we just take a look and if I click on this edit rule button, this will open up and kind of give us a you know, behind the scenes look at what this rule actually does. Now, this is grabbing the filter precast underscore embed. So starting off right, right from the, you know, right from the get-go here, the only way that this rule works is if the precast embed filter is met. And to get a look at that, you can go to your filter tab here and you can just search for precast embed. And this will tell you exactly all of the different criteria that it has to be met. So it has to be added as a subassembly or added to the cast unit too. And it has to be on class 102. So if you have an embed in, in your piece that's class 104 or 108 or anything like that, this, this uh, filter and this rule set is automatically not going to be met. So one of the very first things I do if somebody asks me a question about you know some, some of their strings are not showing up, the very first thing I'll do is I'll come here and check the filters, make sure that the filters are matching and everything is, is kosher there. But now... You know, to kind of get started here, what, what what you could do is take our rules and you know apply them to your company standards. You can kind of flip through here, see where the strings are being placed, and kind of 
you know, pick and choose what you want as far as start points and end points, how you want the lines to be closed. Um, and then the dimension properties here. This dimension property is as embeds. If I were to double select on the string here and just load open embeds, this is where, what that dimension property is. So you can kind of, you know, build and pick and choose, you know, the, the appearance here is pink, right? So pink for embeds, orange for shape, black for overall. You can kind of pick and choose your color schema and then save it away to these dimension properties to then be saved away here into the view settings for the dimensioning. Um, so the kind of the reason I point this out is there's a lot of new users out there and or there's users that haven't really dove deep into the, um, to the AI side of things, right? They're, they're, they've uh, are either new or they're cloning but you know there's been a lot of advancements with the ai and i think we can kind of use this basic structural traditional uh it's a mouthful model but to kind of you know get started and help jumpstart people through their 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 tecla setup journey here um i guess the only other thing that i will point out here is definitely when you're inside this model, you know, you could pay close attention to some of the protection settings. You can kind of, uh, you know, look through and, and see what we have checked. You could also dive into the, uh, if you double select in the background of your drawing, you can kind of see how, you know, each of these cache unit drawing properties is laid out. What we're using under the layout tab and the scaling, um, you know, this other option, which views are being created and those view properties that are being pulled. This is just kind of a, a really good basic building block for really understanding how these drawings are functioning, how they're working, and how to really set up some of that AI that's going on behind the scenes. So this video, this this kind of first, and maybe, maybe I'll even do a series of these, but this first video is just to kind of give a broad overview, um, introduce this basic structural traditional model, show you guys where it's at, how it's functioning, and then how you need to set up you know, your different classes or rules so that way those filters work. So hopefully you guys found this beneficial, um, but thank you guys for watching.